hearing you're hearing bombing in the background we leave my house and we are now speaking to you from the synagogue which is on pushman sky at 12 on sunday sunday morning uh we had we've had bombings all the time thursday friday uh shabbat on saturday we were actually able to be in the synagogue and pray and while the prayers were happening there was bombing going on around well you saw that on good day just a week ago at the start of the russia's war on ukraine we spoke to a brooklyn native rabbi and his wife in kharkiv as bombs were coming down around them at that time they said that they planned to stay in ukraine to help their congregants so all that changed when a missile struck two doors from their home they went on a 30-hour journey across Ukraine to Moldova and Romania, and then they flew to Israel. Now they're trying to help others get the heck out of there. Rabbi Moshe Moskowitz and his wife Miriam join us safely from Israel this morning. We're so happy that you're in a good place. So, Rabbi, tell us exactly um, what was it that kind of shook you to the core? I know uh, there was that bombing two doors down. Where were you and what did it feel like? Well, after six days being in Kharkov under the bombs and we were like uh, from the house to the basement, to the synagogue and the whole time back and forth. And we were listening to the bombs were like far, a little further from the center of the city. All of a sudden we started to see tanks in the same outside my window in the synagogue. I'm swinging on the phone and I see a few tanks going back and forth, the next to the city that a tank was burned. So we decided we are still staying. We are staying with our congregants. And then what happened was that morning, I wanted to send my children away, but the whole night it was bombing. I felt that the bombs were already by the house, two doors away from my house, a big bomb. The whole house already smelled of smoke. The whole house was already like next to the fire. So we decided it's time for us to go. We decided for us to go. So we decided to run, and uh, thank God, after a few days, we got to Israel. But since we are here and the whole way on the road, we are connected to the congregants in the community and outside the community to try to get everybody away from Kharkov. Every single day, out of the synagogue, we have buses and buses taking away people to safety, to Lvov, to uh, Romania, to uh, Moldova, out of the city of Kharkov. We try to also to give help to the people who are there, and our hearts are there. We are waiting for the moment that we should know that it's safe to go back, mm. to get back before the holiday of Purim, to be there on Passover, which is coming soon, and right. to keep on helping the beautiful Kharkov Jewish community. Right. Miriam, I, I know it had to be difficult packing up your stuff and leaving your fellow congregants, you know, there and taking your family. Tell us about the emotions that were going through your mind as you left the synagogue in your community. Okay, so the, when, we, um, when we decided that we've got to get out and together with those another 10 families of rabbis, we all decided we've got to get moving. If we want to save people, we've got to make sure that we survive. So we're going to, we basically looked around our house. I told everybody we have two suitcases. All of my kids chose a bag of their most important things. Um, I had left all my photo albums. I left. A, mil a lot of stuff there. Hopefully, we'll be able to go back one day soon to be able to go back to it. Me and my husband, once all the kids had packed and taken anything that they could, me and my husband took the car, drove to the synagogue a minute away, and an understatement would to say very emotional. My husband walked over to the Torah scrolls where the Torah scrolls are, and he, you know, gave a kiss to the curtain over there and said, "We will be back." We went downstairs. I went down to see the floor. There is 150 people sleeping in the synagogue. These are people who cannot leave for different reasons. And the synagogue, we've made a shelter. So the, the 150 people there were sleeping on the floor. I went over to the cook who has been 24 seven living in the synagogue and cooking for hundreds of people daily. The ones that are in the synagogue and the ones that are we sending food for. I, I told them we'll be back. I tried to um, give them a, a, the hope that we are going and we are continuing to be in touch with them, but that was very, very difficult. As we were driving out, we saw the building that had been shot at and bombed two doors from our house. We grabbed all the children, the bombs were still flying, and we just told the driver, let's get out of here fast. And as we drove out of Kharkov, that was the very sad scenes of seeing how the damage that has been done to such a beautiful, beautiful city. On the way out, on our 30 hour journey, there's a prayer that you say for a safe journey. We 
definitely prayed with a lot of uh, a lot of feeling that we should have a safe journey. But we added the line in the in the prayer that we will be returning soon. Mm -hmm. So that's what we really hope. It was very hard for the children, the children and ourselves. We want to be back. We want to be with our community. Um, we try not to look at the scenes and the photos that are coming from Kharkov of the damage to our, 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 our city, our beautiful city. And one of the rabbi's houses was actually, unfortunately, uh, destroyed. Oh. He managed to get out, but he has no home to go back to. Uh, you know, we're you know, holding on to the hope that you get to return as well safely and as, as so many other people. Uh, Rabbi, what is left in the city of Kharkiv? Because you still said that there's people that are sheltering there in the synagogue. Is there a lack of food, a lack of water, lack of medication? And, and are those needs being met? Well, people are turning to the synagogue from all over the city, in the community, and outside the Jewish community to get help with medicines, food, uh, gasoline, anything that it's everything is being a deficit in, in Kharkov. So we try to get things, we try to get humanitarian help, we try to get people to help and run away, give her, give it over for other people. So basically, the synagogue became like a center, an address that everybody calls. We try to help from here, we try to help from Ukraine inside the city, the people that we have. And sometimes we are more successful, sometimes less successful. But every person that we get out of them, we are literally saving people's lives. So on one hand, the city is destroyed, is destroyed, but the good which was done in this city the last 30 years, as we came from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, that he sent us to the city, that is staying forever. So like we said last time, by adding light and good deeds, we're going to get this darkness away from Kharkov, from Ukraine, and eventually from all over the world. And, and speaking about those good deeds, if people want to help out, you know, where can they go to? Is there a site that you recommend? Okay, well, we have uh, our site is jewishkharkov.org uh, uh, slash donate, J-E-W-I-S-H-K-H-A-R-K-O-V.org slash donate. And we appreciate all the prayers because I think um, as I said the last week, and I definitely realized we need a miracle to get out of this, and every good deed that everybody's doing all over the world will add up to fight this darkness, and we have to show, show the world there's a lot more better people around in the world and goodness in the world than evil and destruction. So we have to hope that um, we will get to a time, we are, we are here now already in Israel, and there is a, a promise that, you know, there will be a time there will be a redemption, will there be only peace in the world? and everyone will be able to return in peace to here. So we hope that this is going to be speedily in our days. We hope so too. Shalom, Rabbi Moshe Moskowitz and his wife Miriam. We, we wish you, you the very best to you and your congregants. Thank, Thank you. you.